Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I have another furniture flip for you here. This is an antique sideboard buffet that was found on the side of the road. This beauty has good bones, mostly some wear and tear. There's some chips in the veneer, cobwebs or some trim missing on it. We even have a couple live critters that are inside. Blah. And there's a big pile of goopy mess. I have no idea what that is. But we're gonna get this lady cleaned up and give her a second chance at life. If you follow my YouTube channel or have seen any of my videos before, you know that I usually start by removing the hardware. But I thought on this piece, we probably better take care of those live critters inside first. I don't have the original audio playing, but I can guarantee you there was a couple screams in there for sure. Spiders absolutely give me the heebie-jeebies, and of course I gotta make sure there's no extra ones in there. And of course it's always a good idea just to go ahead and smack around in there just to be sure. <laughs> All right, now onto the hardware. I really do like the handles that come on this piece. Unfortunately, one of them is missing, so I'm gonna have to replace them, order some new handles off of Amazon. This buffet is so dirty, I even got cobwebs all over my electric screwdriver by removing the handles. All right, once I have the handles removed and the drawers pulled out, it is time to get to cleaning this piece. I'm using Simple Green All-Purpose Cleaner. It is non-toxic and concentrated, so you can make more bottles with that. But this piece is really dirty, so I'm gonna leave it in its original concentrated formula. Also, as a side note, it has a strong black licorice smell. All right, in order to get rid of all this grime, I am pulling out all that I have. I'm gonna use my Pampered Chef scraper to scrape off some hard caked on things and my sponge to scrub it and then wipe it off clean with the paper towel. You can see all the dirt and grime that I'm wiping off, and some of that is the original finish as well, so that's just a telltale sign that this piece will need to be primed before painting. All right, in order to remove that goopy pile of mess, I am using my Pampered Chef scraper. Again, I don't have the original audio playing. It's a good thing because I'm pretty sure that I dry heaped a couple times getting that stuff out of there. I have no idea what that is, and I don't even think I want to know. In this particular video, there is a whole lot of cleaning and prep work before we can get to the painting. But if you stick around to the end to see the final reveal, I promise you it is totally worth it to see how beautiful this piece turns out. And yes, we are still working on cleaning this piece. I have to say this is probably the dirtiest piece I have ever had to prep. Every time I turn around, I just find more cobwebs and more dirt to clean up. 
All right, finally done with cleaning. Let's give this piece a good rinse. I just have some warm water in a bucket and a clean lint-free cloth, and I'm just gonna wipe off any remaining dust or cleaner that is left behind. On one side of the buffet, we have the trim underneath the door, but on the other side, it is missing. So I decide instead of trying to match the trim exactly, it would just be easier to go ahead and remove the side that does have the trim. I use a flathead screwdriver and a hammer just to wedge that flathead screwdriver in between the buffet and the trim and just pry it off. It came off pretty easily, and then I use some water and a towel just to clean back behind it. And then I use some needle nose pliers to remove any remaining nails. This is where we're at after it's clean. It looks so much better than before. All right, let's get to fixing the veneer. My go-to epoxy wood filler is quick wood. It comes in a tube, two different colors. You just grab off a piece, mix it together till it's all one color. And then it works like clay, just mold it into the areas. This is my go-to filler for the parts that I am going to paint. Next, I grab my Gorilla Glue and a small detail brush to repair a corner that is chipping off, and I use a wood clamp just to help the glue set. It's backwards, but this is the all-purpose wood filler from Lowe's that I use in the areas that I'm going to stain. While I wait for all the wood filler to dry, I go inside and make my family lunch. It was pretty yummy. After the wood filler was dry, I went back outside and grabbed my surf prep sander and a medium grade sanding sponge to go over the areas and to smooth out the wood filler so it was even with the flat surface. After a few minutes, I decided to forget the sponge and just use a piece of 100 grit sandpaper. That worked much better flattening out the wood filled areas. You don't have to do this with a fancy sander. You can sand it by hand or any small detail sander that you can buy from Home Depot or Lowe's. I just like the surf prep sander because I can turn on the vacuum attachment and not have much dust in my workshop. To prep the rest of the surface before painting, I grab a fine sanding pad and go over all the areas that I would like to paint. The foam pad allows me to go around edges and curves and get down into the detail so I can scuff sand the entire surface. The abilities of the surf prep sander definitely cut my sanding time in half. When you buy the surf prep sanding kit, it comes with these sanding screens. This is my first time using it and I was really impressed with it. This is a 100 grit sanding screen to get off the finish. The body of the buffet, I just scuff sand, but for the top, I want to remove all of the old finish so I can stain it with a new color. I have to admit that these sanding screens worked really well and will be my continued way of removing previous stain. I grabbed my feather duster and dusted off the top and then went to a higher grade of sanding screen. I grabbed the 180 grit. When prepping a surface to stain, you want to start with a lower grit of number and then work your way up to a higher grit of sandpaper.
After all this sanding, I grabbed a damp, clean, lint-free claw to remove any dust residue. I promise you, we are finally almost done with all this prep work. I also had to let my husband know I was recording so he didn't say or do anything too weird on camera. Okay, so I just want to stain the top of this buffet, so I grab some painter's tape and tape off the edges. So I use this can of stain to prop up a previous piece I was painting, but I'm using Verithane's classic wood stain in the English chestnut. It's been a while since I've used it, so I had to read the directions real fast to make sure I did it right. After stirring the mixture, I grabbed a t-shirt piece and wiped the stain on. I go in circular mo motions to kind of go against the grain in areas, and then I go back over it in long swipes going with the grain. I let the stain sit for about three to five minutes and then grabbed a clean lint-free cloth and wiped off any remaining excess stain. I let the stain dry for two hours and then grabbed a 400 grit piece of sandpaper, lightly went over the surface and then wiped it with a clean lint-free cloth. For a top coat, I am using Verithane's polyurethane in an oil-based formula. For the first layer, I applied a thin coat and then let that dry for four hours. For the second coat of polyurethane, I applied a much thicker coat and then also let that dry for four hours. Once it was completely dry, I grabbed that 400 grit sandpaper, lightly go over the surface and wipe it with a lint-free cloth. All right, let's get to work on the body of the buffet. I am using Zenzer Bullseye's Shellac Sealer in Clear. This is my first time using a clear shellac for primer. I knew I wanted to distress this piece, so I didn't want to use my typical white primer. A couple things that I did learn is that this formula is very runny, so definitely use light amounts on your brush. It dries very, very quickly, so definitely work in small sections. It has a strong odor, so I definitely recommend wearing a mask while using it. And I would use it in a heavily ventilated area. This product was very easy to use and it will definitely be my clear primer that I go to from now on. Just look how it transforms the appearance of this leg. Another great thing about this clear shellac is that it's dry within an hour. This is a 220 grit sanding sponge or pad that I ordered off Amazon and I just lightly go over the entire shellac surface and then wiped it off with a lint-free cloth to remove any dust residue. A piece this beautiful deserves a custom color. I end up mixing together a one-to-one -one ratio of Timeless Blue and Classic Noir in Bare Chalk Paint. I'm a huge fan of the Timeless Blue by itself, but with the dark wood tones, I wanted to give it some extra dimension. That Classic Noir just gave it the perfect gray navy that I was looking for. The Bare Chalk Paint formula is usually a little bit thicker than what you see me using here. Both of the paints that I mixed together have been watered down to spray previous, previous pieces before. If you follow my YouTube channel, you know that I use Bare Chalk Paint a lot. It is my go-to chalk paint as far as quality and price. I think it's the best out there. Let's take a few moments here and just watch the transformation happen. It's one of my favorite parts of painting videos.
was a little undecided on painting the legs or not, but when it got to it, I just went for it. I allowed the first coat of paint to dry for two hours and then came back and added a second coat of paint. While I waited for the second coat of paint to dry, I grabbed my Johnson's Paste Wax to give some lubrication to the drawer slides. I applied it inside the body of the dresser and also to the bottom of the drawers as well. This just helps the drawer slide in and out better. Distressing pieces is a great way to hide flaws and also accentuate the detail. So I grabbed some 150 grit sandpaper and went around all the edges over the detail to give it a worn look and just really added some depth and character to this beauty. I hope you can see where I'm going with all this. To me, it's really starting to come together. Now, I was unsure about painting the legs, but once I distressed them, I decided that was definitely the right choice for me to make. Oh my gosh, just such beauty. At this point, I'm really starting to get excited. I grabbed that 220 grit sanding pad and lightly went over the entire painted surface and then wiped away the dust residue with a lint-free cloth. So these sanding pads are amazing. They make going in and around the details so easily. I will definitely put a link down below in the description. For top coat, I chose Johnson's Paste Wax because I wanted to keep my matte finish from the chalk paint, but also give it durability so it lasts for a long time. I use this wax a lot. It is so easy to use. Just wipe it on with a similar, similar color of a t-shirt piece or cloth. I go in a circle motion and then go back and forth across the piece in the direction that the wood grain would go. Now, if you noticed earlier, I only sprayed two coats of the polyurethane on top of the stain, and that's because I knew I was going to add some wax. That way it has the same finish and the piece is all fluid. I let the wax sit for about 15 to 20 minutes, buff it with the lint-free cloth, and then come back and add a second coat of wax. Let that dry, and then again buff it one last time. With this wax, the more you buff it, the more sheen you get, so you have the control here of how shiny or how matte your piece is. Okay, so I haven't had much luck with doing stencils, but I was at my local boutique and where they have Dixie Belle and the lady was there stocking the shelves and she told me to try to use some gilding wax with a stencil instead that it works every single time. So I found my damask stencil, taped it on and then grabbed the gilding wax in gold, grabbed an applicator sponge and then just pressed it down into the stencil. This was actually really fun and then just gave this piece that extra special something that it deserves.
And the final test, let's see. Yep, she was definitely right. That worked like a charm. All right, let's get this piece put all back together. I added some new hardware that I bought off Amazon. I will make sure to link those as well in the description. I tried to go with ones close to the original style of hardware. And finally, she is all finished. A quick reminder here of our before. And our after. Thank you so much for sticking with me through all of this. I know this was a lot of prep work and it was a lot of cleaning and all that to get to the fun part of painting and staining, but I think this piece ended up being absolutely beautiful. I love the custom color, the handles. We just gave this piece of junk that was on this side of the road a second life and it looks phenomenal. So tell me what you guys think. Do you like the paint color? Would you have left the legs wooden yourself or go ahead and paint them like I did? I want to know your thoughts. For those of you interested in the numbers, this was a free piece of furniture off the curb and it sold within an hour of posting for $650. This was a labor of love for me and I am very, very happy with that profit. If you haven't already, go ahead, like, subscribe, hit the bell, and as always, until next time.